How are you so good to see us all? Good to be back in the house of the Lord this evening, isn't it? And looking forward to the pastor bringing uh, this evening's devotional in just a, a few moments. So a big warm welcome to everyone that's watching online as well. Um, don't forget just uh, the services for the upcoming week. Don't forget no mums and tots um, tomorrow morning with the funeral taking place. But just keep Billy, uh, Billy's family in your prayers um, over the next few days and weeks. Uh, and especially tomorrow morning uh, as the funeral service takes place here um, uh, at quarter past ten tomorrow morning. And um, Friday evening is Thrive Youth from seven to nine. And then we're here again on Sunday. Pastor will be bringing the word of both of our services on Sunday. So look forward to seeing everybody then as well. And um, we'll open up in a word of prayer and then we'll hand straight over to Pastor. Bless you. Lord, we praise you, Lord, for what has already taken place in your house tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the time that we had with the kids earlier on, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that we're found here this evening again, Lord, just to have a time of prayer together, Lord, and to gather around your word, Lord. And as I often say, there's nowhere else we would rather be than here in your house and here in your presence, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've done for each and every single one of us, Lord. And Lord, we know that there's others who would love to be here this evening, Lord, but are unable to be. And Lord, we'll be lifting these people up before you, Lord, again a little bit later on. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, that even at times whenever we forget about things, whenever we forget names and we forget to mention people, Lord, we thank you that you never do, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, that you know each and every person, that you know each and every circumstance, Lord. And Lord, as I often say, there won't be a single thing anybody would ask for tonight that you're not already aware of, Lord. But thank you that not only do you know about the need, but you can meet that need. And Lord, for those that need a touch from you, Lord, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you just place your healing hand upon them. And Lord, that you bring them back to full health and strength. Lord, anybody that's waiting for test results or anything like that, Mm. Lord, Lord, we just pray that you would ease their mind. And Lord, that they would receive nothing other than good news, Lord. Lord, we'll be mindful to give you the glory. Lord, we pray for George again, Lord. Lord, just continue to be (laughs) with them, Lord. Continue to just have your loving, peaceful arms around them, Lord. That you continue to feel you close to them at this time, Lord. And Lord, what we pray for George, we pray for Billy's family as well, Lord, in the coming days, Lord. Lord, that they would get to know you as Saviour if they don't already, Lord. But Lord, that you would just comfort them, Lord, and that they would feel your peace and your presence. So Lord, as we hand over to Pastor now, Lord, as I always pray, thank you for him, Lord. We thank you for Lynn as well, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you'd be with them both, Lord, and the family, Lord. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy, Lord. Keep them well, Lord. We know that you're always with them, Lord, never leaving them, never forsaking them, Lord. But Lord, just be with them, Lord. And Lord, just keep them safe and healthy, Lord. Jesus. Lord, I pray that you give them fruits for their labor. And Lord, that we would even hear in coming days that somebody who's been watching at home, Lord, even tonight, Lord, even this coming Sunday, Lord, will have given their lives to you, Lord. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, David. And apologies uh, that Phil can't make it this evening, but he had a a parenting accident that's just uh, at home. He fell down the stairs, fell over the kids' shoes. Imagine kids doing that in this day and age. I couldn't tell you about how we fell over and stood in Lego and all sorts of things. It's the joys of it. Glory to God. I wanted to say whenever you get married, but all your problems be little ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so be it. Folks, if you have your Bible with you, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 12. Very short, uh, but a wonderful, wonderful passage of Scripture. And one, certainly one of my favourite. I just want to take one verse this evening, but, but we'll read the, all six of the verses. I know that will bless our hearts. And bless our souls to see them. Isaiah chapter 12. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comforts me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw, draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted, sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things, 
This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Praise the Lord, bless the reading of his word. Yeah, what a on. wonderful hymn of thanksgiving. You know, in this week's devotion, folks, I'll keep it short to the last we have plenty of time for prayer. With the help of the Lord, I just want to use this wee passage, this, this wee verse, Isaiah 12 and 2. And how we can, in a simple way, apply it to your life. It's a powerful, powerful little verse. And it just every time I read through it, it's one of those passages that just blesses my heart. But especially uh, the, the second verse of it. This was the very first passage of scripture I ever read in, in church as a believer. And it just every time I come across it, it just, just, does, just does me good. I just trust and pray that what I say this evening will be a blessing uh, to you. You know, just even to kick off that little verse. Behold, what a way to start. You know, the writer is wanting to draw your attention straight away. That's a word that just stands out. Every time we come across it, we see that, that God is speaking in, through it in his word and wants to, wants to speak to us. <coughs> Behold, glad, glad, glad tidings of great joy shall be to all men. We thought about that there recently, and folks are not alone. We're thinking about it again, as it were. But you know, here's something that the writer says. I want you to get... I want you to contemplate this. I want you, as it were, to stop what you're doing for a moment and have your attention. I want to witness something to you. And I want to witness something great to you. And when we look at the couple of words after this, we can see that this is indeed something truly wonderful and a real blessing. He says, Behold, God is my salvation. The first declaration of this powerful little verse and the last declaration of that little verse, it just matched together. He says, Behold, God is my salvation. <coughs> and he closes the verse by saying, He has also become my salvation. We can see there that in this verse, it just speaks of God's great salvation. And it also speaks of God's great Savior, because who is now unto the Lord? He is the first, and he's the last. So he's the first declaration in this verse. And he's the last declaration in this verse. Shows again that he is the first, the last. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Glory to God. We can go further. We can say he's our Redeemer. He is our victor by the cross work of Calvary. And I know that even as Isaiah wrote this, that the, Isaiah, that, that the Calvary hadn't been accomplished yet. But you know, it's remarkable for us folks. We stand here some 2,000 years later and look back to the cross and know that it happened with an absolute assurance within our souls and within our hearts that Christ died for us according to the scriptures. And here we see Isaiah some seven, 800 years before the event actually happened. And he knew within his heart and within his soul that God was going to send his only begotten son to die for him. And he knew deep within the wells of his heart that God was going to send a victor for him. God was going to be his hope. God was going to be his trust. Hallelujah. And of course we know that they were, they were believing the Lord Jehovah. He says he's my strength and he is my song. You know, no wonder the Lord Jesus speaking to the Jews and John speaking to uh, the disciples as well in John 14. He says, you believe in God? Believe also in me. I think that is powerful all together. But Isaiah had caught all of this all the years even before that. You know, as he wrote this remarkable chapter and wrote this powerful verse, you know, he's able to look right ahead in, in, in victory as we look back in victory. And he was looking forward to a day when Christ would become the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He was looking towards the day that the Lord Jesus would come into the world to be the saviour and take away all of our sins. He goes on, he says, I will trust and not be afraid. Folks, we trust God. We trust his word. We stand upon his promises on a daily basis. We believe that he will keep us. We trust it and we believe and when we cry for salvation that he will save us. When you look back to the evil when God saved you, you cry out to your God that you didn't know. And he answered you. And he answered your prayer, glory to God. And now we can call out to the Lord who we do know. And how, and how much more is he going to answer? Because we are now his children. Hallelujah. No longer are we children of wrath, but we are children of the King of Kings 
and the Lord of Lords. When we call out for healing, he will heal us. When we call out for deliverance, hallelujah, he will deliver. We trust him in all of our circumstances. And there's a wonderful chorus of a wee hymn that simply sums up trusting, as it were. It says, trusting as the moments fly, trusting as the days go by, trusting him whatever before, trusting Jesus, and that is all. You know, it doesn't end there at the trusting. He goes on to say, and not be afraid. We've spoken, oh, I've lost count of how often we've spoken about fear in the past, but fear grips the soul. Fear can grip any of us, the strongest even of us uh, in our faith. There's, there's times whenever fear can come upon us and robs us of all of our joy. It robs us of all of our real blessings. But you know, folks, we can, we can trust in Christ, knowing that whatever comes our way, that we should not be afraid. doesn't mean to say we won't be afraid, but we shouldn't be afraid. We can trust in one who is, is able to keep us, and that is why we, why we fear not. You know, it's got dark, hasn't it, this evening? You know, are we fearful that the sun won't rise again in the morning? The sun will rise again in the morning. And sometimes in our lives, folks, it can be dark for a while. You know, but joy's coming in the morning. Yeah. And we hang on to that and we believe that God has good things. He watches over us every day and every hour. He is faithful. He is just. He holds us. And he sustains us. If you look at how he holds and sustains the, the earth on which we stand on and which we live in, he looks after him and he looks after us so very well. So why do we fear? We need to trust. We need to obey. And we do not fear because he's the source of our salvation. He supports us and he stabilizes our lives, especially in the rocky moments. And he brings us that wonderful safety and that covering. When the enemy comes in, I love it whenever you think about it, when the enemy comes in like a flood. And folks, some of us have seen that flood, some of us are in that flood. But the Lord raises a banner. Bless you, Lord. Up against him. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Paul writing to the church at Rome reminds us of this great salvation, to trust and not be afraid. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's that peace, peace not to fear. No fear. You know, you see boys walking about without their hats and their jackets. No fear. That should be our mantra. No fear. Because we're standing on the promises of the Lord. Like I said, to have seen the salvation of the Lord. Nothing in ourselves, but it's all through Christ and Him crucified. He goes on to say in this verse, the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. And if there's anything you take away this evening from, from what I say to you, it's simply this. There are three wonderful little S's in this, 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 this short little verse. First one is salvation. The second one is strength. And the third one is song. Folks, he is our saviour. He is our strength. And he is that new song that we sing every morning anew. And no matter what we have to face, we know that we're, we're saved. And we're strong in him and glory to God. We've got a song in our hearts. He's our strength for the day. He helps us to meet the challenges physically and naturally. He helps us to meet the challenges of the world and a spiritual nature as well too. And when we look to him, folks, we are never unsatisfied. Billy Graham was said one time that he never met a man who truly trusted Christ. And they thought it was a mistake. There's no mistake. It's something wonderful. If someone ever came to you and said, I tried that and there was nothing in it, they never had the real thing at all. When you've got the real thing, you'll never say, oh, I've made the biggest mistake of my life. Folks, people have made the biggest mistakes of their life by not following Christ, right. by not going in for salvation. I was a man there the other day sharing testimony of what was happening in Canada, a place, uh, a place called Labrador in Canada. <coughs> God was really moving. God was saving night after night in these meetings. And it came to the third and fourth night of the meetings where the young men were standing behind looking for prayer. And he says, you know, there was one, one man there, a young, young, young fellow, and he says that he was there anxious, anxious for his soul. And he says there was five of them. He says that he was the most anxious. He was the one that wanted to pray for first. He was the one that wanted to hear first. And he says the sad reality is this. He says he's still not saved. He says but the other four got up. They stayed. They, the, the, the light came. You know, folks... Is the best thing that they ever done. But sad there's so, so many have been some, come so, so close. So close. And yet they've walked away empty-handed. 
There's no need to walk away on behalf of it. He is our salvation. How do we know that we're saved? Call upon him. Call upon me, the Lord says, and I will answer. Folks, we're not never unsatisfied. I can say tonight with an assurance that my soul is satisfied. Satisfied beyond satisfaction, glory to God, because he is my son. The Lord Jesus never disappoints. Folks, we disappoint. And at times there are people who will disappoint us. But he never lets us down. Hallelujah. Never lets us down. Even when we let him down. Even when we, and we've all been there at times, we've been into these crazy covenants with the Lord. We've said, Lord, if you, if you bring me through this, well, you know, I'm going to do this, 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 and this for you. And the Lord even knows that we're not going to do this, 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 and this for him. But you know what? He still delivers us. He's still there for us. And he doesn't come back to us and say, you promised me and you didn't come through. And we've never had to go to him and say, Lord, you promised me and you never came through. We can always go to him and say, Lord, you promised me. And time and time and time again, you came through. Sometimes, folks, we've, we've had to wait. Sometimes we've had to march, as it were, around the city seven times before the walls fell. But did they not come down? And, folks, if you're facing a wall this evening, don't you worry. The Lord might take you right to it. Put your nose against the bricks. But the wall will come tumbling down because he is perfect and good in all of his ways. Like Isaiah, we have found our salvation in him. We have found our purpose for living. It's in him and it's through him. And we have found our purpose for living. You know what our purpose for living is this. He died for us. Therefore, we live for him. And we rose. he rose again. So therefore, in confidence, we can die in him. He is our life. He is our hope. He is our everything. And of course, just let me read that little verse to you again as we close and come to a time of prayer. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. And he has also become my salvation. Praise we know the Lord will bless these few remarks this evening. I just trust and pray that I'm a blessing to you here and a blessing to those at home as well too. In Jesus' lovely name. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.